of Ahlul Bayt salam, and to the entire humanity. Dear children, dear parents, I would request you to all to take wuzu prior to sitting down for the Majlis of Baba Abdullah. And tonight we are here to learn about the Masayib of Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam, the Bawafa Alamdar alayhi salam. And very important not to waste water. Today is the second day where the water has been stopped on the children in the camps in, uh, of Abba Abdullah. Dear children, let's all put our hands together. Let's all put our hands together and start with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I start in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Let's all send our salam to Abba Abdullah Imam Hussein. Assalamu ala al Hussein, wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein, wa ala awlad al Hussein, wa ala ashab al Hussein. Once again, I would like you guys to understand what this salam really means. So we are sending salam on Imam Hussein. Then we are sending salam. Wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein. Wa ala Ali ibn al Hussein. We are sending salam to Ali, son of Imam Hussein. And after that, we are sending Sending salam on Aulad al Hussein means the children of Imam Hussein. And after that, we're saying, Wa ala ashab al Hussein. We are sending salam on the companions of Imam Hussein. And tonight is the Masaib of Hazrat Abu Fazl al Abbas. Salam. So let's all send our salam to the Father. Assalamu salamu alayka ya Imam Ali. Let's send salam to Bibi Fatima Zahra who made dua. Assalamu alayki ya Bibi Fatima Zahra. Let's send salam to the mother of Hazrat Abbas. Assalamu alayki ya Bibi Ummul Banin. Let's send salam. Assalamu alayka ya Hazrat Abbas. Assalamu alayka ya Imam Mehdi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yeah, I 
Jazakallah, mashallah, Burhan. Really nicely recited Tilawat e Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. May Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam be pleased with you. Jazakallah, mashallah, Burhan. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum ajmain. Mashallah. Please, oh, I request all of you guys to recite salawat. Now we have with us Sayyida Sakina and Sayyida Masuma who have prepared a noha for all of you guys. Please send your salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajal farjama ajmeen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Abbasin ala te. Abbasin ala te. Makhid al-ki zameen ha-gay. Mashkade 
लौटे पानी के लिए मास्क वलम लेके गए थे पानी के लिए मास्क वलम लेके गए थे दिन ढल गया रात आ गई अब्बास न लौटे शह आ गए मार्श का गए अब्बास न लौटे खैमो में लगी आग तो अम मुंह को बुलाने खैमो में लगी आग तो अम को बुलाने मासूम सकी ना गई अब न लौटे शह आ गए मार्श का गए अब न लौटे मखदल की जमी भाग गई अब न लौटे शह आ गए मार्श का गए अब से न लौटे अल्लाह सर अला मोहम्मद मोहम्मद and really really heart touching know how you recited tonight and for a lot of you it's so important for you to understand and listen carefully to the wordings of the noha the wordings of this noha was that the mashq in which hazrat abbas went to grab water that came back to the camp to the tents but hazrat abbas did not come back with the mashq and the mashq was empty there was no water inside the mashq mashallah jazakallah may allah be pleased with you may you be among the companions of imam mahdi jazakallah mashallah amen you children mashallah assalamu alaikum my name is alisa and i'm from melbourne australia al fatiha أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارك الخلائق يا جماعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا بالقاسم محمد صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل لقدة من لساني ويفقه قولي اللهم صل على محمد وآل Muhammad. Happiness in its true essence. To understand happiness in its true essence, I would like to put through some thought inciting questions and scenarios to my audience, and we'll be taking some examples to understand true happiness. Why is it that Allah creates us with so much love and sends us to this world to find Him and promises us Jannah and gives us such beautiful role models like our Imams? Why do we then still find ourselves miserable and life not as happy? We seem to be just struggling, struggling like a donkey tied to a mule, going round and round endlessly. Why doesn't there seem to be any purpose to life? We find absurd, absurd reason and blame others for our unhappiness. For example, as kids, we either blame our parents for not waking us up on time and reminding us. to complete a task later in life we blame them for not realizing our true potential we blame our siblings for distracting us for not being able to focus on our studies as adults we blame the country we live in we blame the system 
In in the end, if we don't get anyone, we will blame Allah for not giving us enough opportunities. In other words, we are constantly looking at immediate reasons and cause and effect and looking for someone who can take the blame for why we are unhappy and why we have not succeeded in life and attained the great ideals that we had from the time we were used to. The reason we think are unhappy is not the apparent reason. The reason we are unhappy is because we have a lot we, we have we have lost our connection to our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we cannot exist without Allah, it is impossible to disconnect from Him, but it is possible to be in a state of khafla. Now, khafla means being negligent or being uncaring. Allah is closer to us than our jugular wine. Most of us would know what a jugular wine is, but I will still explain it a little for those who don't know about it. So a jugular wine is inside our throats and connecting a brain to a heart. Now, I would ask you guys to put your hands on your throat and imagine a highway or a road inside that is carrying blood to your brain. I hope you guys notice how close it is. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even more closer than that. Allah is constantly with us. But we are asleep. We are in a state of ghafla. Allah constantly tells us in the Quran, If you forget me, I will not lose anything, but you will harm yourselves. The best way to maintain connection with Allah is to remember Allah at all times through zikr, prayers, and including Allah in our every deed. I would like to elaborate a bit more in a form of a story now. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Rahim. He went to a rich and a wise man to learn about the secret of happiness in his palace. The, the wise man asked the boy Rahim, Go look around my palace and return in two hours. Meanwhile, I want you to, to hold this spoon with two drops of oil. As you wander around, carry the spoon with you without with you without allowing the oil to spill. Rahim began climbing and descending the many stairways of the palace, keeping the eye fixed on the spoon. He went through the gardens of the, the palace and wandered around. After two hours. Rahim returned to the wise man's room. Well, asked the wise man, did you see the Persian tapestries hanging on the dining hall? Did you see the master garden which took 10 years to create? Did you see the beautiful parchments in the library? Rahim was embarrassed and confessed he didn't observe anything his only concern was to not spill the oil the wise man entrusted to Rahim pick the spoon and go and observe the marvels of his world you you cannot trust a man if you don't know his house said the wise man Rahim picked up the spoon and went around the palace, this time observing all the works of art in buildings, gardens, ceilings, and everything. This time he detailed everything to the wise man. But where are the drops of oil and spoon? asked the wise man. Rahim saw the spoon and the oil was gone. Well, there is only one piece of advice I can give you, said the wise man. Spoon with oil is similar to connection and focus, which you missed while wandering around my palace. And my palace is analogous to this world. To, to attain happiness, always keep your eyes open and at all times and never forget Allah. Be attentive to this world, but always stay connected to Allah. 
Well, the story tells us the importance of focus and importance of remembering Allah at all times. We should never forget how far our Imams went for their love of Allah. Our third Imam, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, was so connected with Allah that he gave us everything in the part of Allah. His 72 followers were so devoted to him and, and his turn to Allah that they didn't leave Imam Hussein even when given an option. In essence, the true happiness, as I stated before, does lie in maintaining a connection to Allah. Salvat. Allahumma sallila Muhammad wa alayhi. Jazakallah, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with you. Dear children, dear parents, moving on now with tonight's getting closer to the Messiah of Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas. Somebody asked in the comments whose majlis we are doing tonight. This is the majlis of all the Shohada Karbala, but each night we are trying to identify and understand about each certain personality that was present at Karbala. But all of these different personalities, we go each night, dear children, from Hazrat Qasim, um, Hazrat Ali Azgar, Hazrat Ali Akbar, Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas, they all got martyred on the same day, on the day of Ashura. You should not get confused that on the 8th, Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas was martyred. On the 6th, Hazrat Ali Azgar was martyred. It's not like that, dear children. They were all martyred on the 10th of Muharram. Dear children, let's look at this screen. The word, remember this word, dear children. I'm going to say it, which is Shabi. Okay, Shabi. Means a propagate or representation of the Rosa of Masumin alayhi salam. So what does that mean? Many times we hear people saying that Hazrat Ali Akbar was the Shabi of Rasulullah, was like a complete match of Rasulullah in his attitude, in his personality, in his look, mashallah. So we also to remember what happened at Karbala, we use this items in remembrance what actually took part. The Allah is a shabi of Hazrat Abul Fazl al Abbas Alam uh, when he went to Nehre Fura to get water for the orphans, for the children crying. The same manner, Zuljana, every year in Pakistan, India, in many parts of the country around the world they take out horses and dress it in such a way that, that it is representing Zuljana the horse of Abba Abdullah Hussein we also have Tabut which is the coffin we make those in as a shabi of the Tabut of Rasul Khuda, Tabut of Imam Hussein, Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas, and near many nights in the Majlis, if you go to your centers, Imam Baragas, you notice how the Tabut is coming. Some nights they will go around the center, Imam Baraga, with the alam of Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas. This is what it means to remember and to love this certain propagate representation of the Masumin alayhim as salam, dear children. Each night we're going through this, we have covered, if you look at dear children at the green star on the screen, because I can't take my cursor, or maybe I can hear dear children. So we know Bibi Fatima and Imam Ali were married. They had Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Bibi Zainab, Bibi Kulsum, and Hazrat Mohsin. When Bibi Fatima died, then Imam Ali married and Bibi Umul Banin. They both had a child, Hazrat Abbas, just like tonight, Muhammad Mehdi Ali explained beautifully how Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas was born. So he's also the son of Imam Ali and Bibi Umul Banin. So that's, and if you look at this screen, dear children, this is talking about who is Bibi Umul Banin, Lubaba, and Ruqayya. 
So Imam Ali and Bibi Ummul Banin, they had one, two, three, four, five children, according to most historians. We have Hazrat Abbas, the oldest son. We have Abdullah, Usman, Jafar, and Bibi Ruqayya, who also is the wife of Hazrat Muslim Ibn Aqil. Remember, he went to Kufa and he got Shaheed. He was thrown from the highest roof in the tower. Remember, the ambassador and the cousin. So coming back to Hazrat Abbas, okay, look at the green box. Hazrat Abbas, alayhi salam, his wife. We need to also know who his wife is or was, if many of you want to say it that way. Bibi Lubaba bin Ubaidullah. Okay, and many historians say Hazrat Abbas had four sons, some say five sons and two daughters. Allah knows best. Why do we call him Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas? Why Abul Fazl means the father of Fazl. One of his son's name is Fazl. Okay, dear children. Now, moving on. I am going to show you pictures of the shrine of Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas. So as you look at this shrine, send your salam. As-salam alayka ya yabna amir al Mu'minin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you can't say, if you don't know whose shrine it is, where you are going, just say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's more than enough, dear children. This is the shrine of Hazrat Abbas when he was shaheed. After that, they built this shrine in honor of Hazrat Abbas. Right, the opposite side is the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The two brothers buried very close to each other. And in the middle, we call it Bain al -Harmain. I pray to Allah, we all go, inshallah, next year or in the coming years, whenever it is for our safety, that we go and visit the holy shrines. Dear children, this is Nehre Furat, the river where Hazrat Abbas went to get water. This is where in, on the return, he didn't make it, dear children. This is Nehre Furat. This is how Nehre Furat looks like today. If you go for the ziyarat, they, the, um, the people, if you tra the travelers group will take you to Nehre Furat here as well. All these people have been to the ziyarat. They've come here and witnessing and try to remember what happened to Hazrat Abbas when he came near the water of Furat, how he wanted to drink the water, but he remembered, no, I can't drink the water. Everybody is waiting for me. Everybody is thirsty. I need to take water for them first. I said to my mother, I will never drink water before the children of Imam Hussein. How can I drink water? Remember this, dear children. This is the inside the holy shrine of Hazrat Abbas. Can you all see the mashq? In the olden days, they didn't have bottle to take water. They had mashq to carry waters. They took this to the river to carry water. And the arrows made holes in this mashq that the water dripped down. The water never made it back to the camp, dear children. As you enter here, this is the door going towards the haram of Hazrat Abbas, you send your salam, dear children. Look at this to your children very carefully. Do you know what this is? If you know, type in the comments if you know what this place is. This is two places where both arms of Hazrat Abbas were cut off. This is first place where the arm was cut off, or this is the second place, vice versa. I'm not too sure, but one hand was cut off here and the other was cut off here. In remembering that, they have built a certain place. This is in the near the shops in Iraq. Dear children, tonight's message, let's come towards that. Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas, we know he is the flag bearer tonight, very beautifully Muhammad said. He's the flag bearer and he said he showed loyalty in the real meaning. Wafa. Many know as you listen, we call him Ba Wafa. 
who showed complete loyalty to Imam of his time, Imam Hussein, till his very last breath. Let's all make dua to Allah. Ya Allah, make me as brave and loyal like Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. Ilahi amin, dear children. Now I am going to play the video by Sayyidah Hania Naqfi and inshallah soon Tijani brothers will join us. Please recite a loud salawat. Allahumma swalli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum ajma'in. Known as Qamar Bani Hashim, the moon of the family of Hashim. Hazrat Abbas was very popular with the children of Imam Hussein, especially Bibi Sakina, who was only four years old. Whenever the children wanted anything, they would cry out, Ya Abbas or Ya Ammu, and Hazrat Abbas would go running. But from the seventh of Muharram, Abbas was unable to respond to their cries for water. Then came the day of Ashura. After Zohar prayers, one by one, the brave companions of Imam Hussein fell in the battlefield. At last, only Imam Hussein, Hazrat Yakbar, and Hazrat Abbas were left. Imam Zayn Labadin lay sick in his tent. Several times Hazrat Abbas asked Imam Hussein for permission to go and fight. Each time Imam Hussein would reply, Abbas, you're the captain of my army. You are my alamdar, the standard bearer. Hazrat Abbas would never argue with Imam Hussein. His three brothers were killed in the battle fought after Zohar. Imam Hussein could see the anger in Hazrat Abbas's eyes especially when Hazrat Qasim's body was trampled upon by the enemy. Imam Hussain knew that if he let Hazrat Abbas go and fight, there would be a massacre in the enemy rank. Imam Hussain's object was to reawaken Islam and not to score a victory on the battlefield. Just then, Bibi Sakina came out holding a dried up water bag. She walked up to Hazrat Abbas and said, I'm thirsty. Oh, my uncle Abbas. Hazrat Abbas went to Imam Hussein and requested for permission to go and get water for Bibi Sakina. Imam Hussein gave his permission. Hazrat Abbas put Bibi Sakina's march on the alam, mounted his horse and rode up to Imam Hussein. He said, I've come to say goodbye. Imam Hussein said, my brother, come and embrace me. Hazrat Abbas dismounted his horse. With tears in the Imam's eyes as Hazrat Abbas prepared to mount his horse. Imam Hussain said, my brother, I want a gift from you. I want your sword. Hazrat Abbas, without uttering a word, gave Imam Hussain his sword and rode into the battlefield, armed only with a spear and holding the alam. There were 3,000 enemy soldiers in the battlefield, they had all heard of the valor of Hazrat Abbas. A cry aroused, Abbas is coming! As these soldiers started hiding behind one another, a few brave ones stared go near Hazrat Abbas, but were soon put to death by the spear or by a kick. Hazrat Abbas reached the river for wrath, he filled the mush with water. He himself was very thirsty. He took the water in his palms, he looked at it and threw it away, saying, O oh, water for wrath, my lips can welcome you only after Bibi Sakina has quenched her thirst. He placed the mush on his alam and started to ride back. Umar Saad cried out, Do not let that water reach Hussein's camp. 
otherwise we shall all be doomed. A soldier climbed a tree, and as Hazrat Abbas was riding past the tree, he struck his sword on the right shoulder. The spear and the arm fell onto the ground. Just then, someone crept behind Hazrat Abbas and struck him on the left shoulder. The alarm fell. Hazrat Abbas gripped the mush with his teeth. His one object was to get the water to be Sakina. Fighting with his feet, he urged the horse to get him to Imam's camp as quickly as possible. Alas, an arrow was shot. It went flying across the desert and hit the bag. The water began to pour out. And with the water, all the hopes of Hazrat Abbas poured onto the sands of Karbala to be buried forever in the thirsty desert. Hazrat Abbas Abbas now did not want to go back and face Bibi Sakina. With his feet, he signaled the horse to turn back. The enemy surrounded him from all sides. Hazrat Abbas fell from the horse. As he fell, he cried out, My salams to you, Ya Mawla. Imam Hussain seemed to lose all his strength when he heard the voice of his dear brother, Abbas. When Hazrat Abbas left to go to fetch water, Imam stood at the gate of the camp, watching the alam. Bibi Sakina was standing next to Imam Hussain, also with her eyes fixed on the alam. When Hazrat Abbas reached the river bank and bent down to fill the mush, the alam disappeared from sight. Bibi Sakina was frightened and looked at her father. Imam said, Sakina, your uncle Hazrat Abbas is at the river bank. Bibi Sakina smiled and said, Alhamdulillah and called out all the children to welcome Hazrat Abbas. When Hazrat Abbas lost both arms, the alarm fell onto the ground. Bibi Sakina could see it no longer. She looked at Imam Hussain, but he turned his face away. Bibi Sakina began to tremble with fear, and her eyes filled with tears. She raised her hands and prayed, Ya Allah, do not let them kill my uncle, Abbas. I will never ask for water again and ran inside to her mother. Imam Hussain reached where Hazrat Abbas was lying. It was a tragic sight. Hazrat Abbas was lying on the ground. Both arms had been severed. There was an arrow in the right eye, and blood blocked the left eye. As soon as Hazrat Abbas sensed the presence of Imam Hussain, he said, Mawla, why did you take the trouble to come over? Please go back and look after Sakina. Imam Hussain said, My dear brother, all your life you have served me and my children. Is there anything I can do for you at this last moment of your life? Hazrat Abbas replied, Aqa, please clean the blood from my eyes so that I can see your beloved face before I die. Imam cleaned the blood. Hazrat Abbas fixed his gaze on the Imam. Then he said, Mawla, please do not carry my body to the camp. I do not wish Sakina to see me in this state. Imam Hussain took Hazrat Abbas in his arms and kissed his forehead. Abbas bin Ali. Abbas had passed towards the river Euphrates, killing the enemy charging towards him. He continued his advance into the heart of Ibn Sa'd's army. He was under a heavy shower of arrows, but was able to penetrate them and get to the river. He immediately started filling the water skin in a remarkable and immortal gesture of loyalty to his brother and Muhammad's grandson. He did not drink any water despite being severely thirsty. He put the water skin on his right shoulder and started riding back to where they attends. Imam ibn Sa'd ordered his army to kill him, saying that if Abbas succeeds in taking water back to his camp, we will not be able to defeat them. A massive army blocked his way and surrounded him. He was ambushed from behind. A soldier cut off his right arm. He put the water skin on his left shoulder and continued his way. However, his left arm was also cut off. Abbas now held the water skin with his teeth. The army of Ibn Sa'd started shooting arrows at him. One arrow hit the water skin and water poured out of it. Now he turned his horse back towards the army and charged towards them. But one arrow hit his eye and someone hit the back of his head with a huge lance and he fell off the horse.
In his last moments, Abbas was trying to wipe the blood in his eyes to enable him to see Imam Hussein's face. He asked his brother not to take his body back to the camps because he had promised to bring back water, but failed. He could not bear to face his beloved niece Sakina, the daughter of Imam Hussein. Then, upon the insistence of the Imam, Abbas called him brother for the first time in his life, instead of calling him master or sir. Before the death of Abbas ibn Ali, the Imam said, Abbas, your death is like the breaking of my back. Thank you, Hussein. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajuhum ajmain. Dear children, dear sisters and brothers, now we have with us Sayyidah Noria Naqvi, who is also, she has put a lot of effort tonight and she has prepared a noha. So now I would request Sayyidah Noria Naqvi to please share her noha. Please recite salawat for her well being, for her family's well being. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Karte hai matam haram abbas ka Ho ho gaya marnas Kitam abbas ka Karte hai matam Maharama Baska Ho Gaya Marna Sitama Baska Hai Alanda Hai Alanda Hai Alanda Hai Alanda कहते थे कमर थाम के ये सैयद अबरार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार ये हाल हलाशे का संभाला नहीं जाता संभाला नहीं जाता तीर आंख से भाई की निकाला नहीं जाता निकाला नहीं जाता इमदाद को आ जाए या है दर कर रार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार जैनब ने तेरी आस पे छोड़ा था मदीना छोड़ा था मदीना मैं कैसे बताऊ उसे सब कोई सकीना सब कोई सकीना मारा गए नब तेरी चादर कने गहदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार तुम कत्ल हुए हम पे भी चल जाएगी शमशीर चल जाएगी शमशीर अगर में रह जाएगी तनहा मेरी हमशीर तनहा मेरी हमशी जैनब किरदा बचने के बाकी नहीं आसार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार जिस तरह से घर लाए थे मस्जिद से अली को मस्जिद से अली को उस तरह से ले जाएंगे खैमे में जरी को खैमे में जरी को अकबर मेरे भाई का जनाजा करो तैयार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार बाजू भी कलम हो गए हैं बाजू शबी 
ए बाजू शबी टुकड़े हैं बदन आंख में पैवास्त हुआ तीर पैवास्त हुआ तीर किसने ये मेरी माँ की दुआओं पे किया बार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार हाय अलमदार May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your efforts constantly in the majlis of Aba Abdullah Hussain in its complete manner. And Aku Koi Ram Nade Sivai Rame Hussain alayhi salam. Dear children, dear parents, joining us live now, we have Shabir Tijani. Joining us tonight for the Masaib of Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas, and we'll finish off tonight's majlis with the Noha recitation. Dear children, let's all pay our respect in this majlis of Abba Abdullah Hussein and Bil Hussein Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas. Let's all recite a loud salawat for the well being of the Jani brothers, Hashim sisters, and for their families. Allahumma swalli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajahum ajma'in. I will now request Shabir Tijani, brother, to please start tonight's majlis with your message with the Masaib of Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam. During the Masaib of Abul Fadl Abbas alayhi salam, is an almost impossible task. But let's just go back in the history to when Abu Fadl was born. When Mullah Abbas was born, it is said that he would not open his eyes. His mother had him in her arms and he wouldn't open his eyes. And she turned to Mullah Ali and said, Oh, my master, I think there's something wrong with my son. He's not opening his eyes. Mala Ali said, just pass him to his brother Hussein. And as soon as Hussein took him in his arms, I will father open those beautiful eyes for the first time. And then we go into history and we look at when Mala Ali al -Islam was leaving this world. <clears throat> Mala Ali gathered all of his family members and his companions and everyone together. And he made everyone pledge their allegiance to Mala Hassan al -Islam. And when, when he made uh, everyone pledge their allegiance to Mullah Hassan alayhi salam, there was one child left in the corner of the room sobbing and crying. And Umul Banin said, Oh, my master, has my son done something wrong? Ali called his son Abbas towards him. He called Hussein towards him. He said, Oh, Abbas, I've made everyone pledge their allegiance to Hassan, Imam Hassan alayhi salam. But your allegiance is always going to be with Hussein alayhi salam. Put your hands on the hands of Hussein and never leave his side. When we think of Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam, we think of his honor, his valor, his bravery, his courage. But one thing I want to talk about today was the love of Abu Fadl al Abbas. The sabr of Abu Fadl al Abbas. You see in history on several occasions, there was times when Abu Fadl could have fought, but he was stopped and he was told, oh Abbas, you are only, you've only been created to fight on the day of Ashura. Put your sword away, don't fight today. And look what happens on the day of Ashura. Mullah Hussain says to Abbas, oh Abbas, imagine the heart of Abu Fadl Abbas. He says, oh Abbas, you've been brought up and you've been raised to fight on this day, but today I want you to put your sword away and just go out and bring some water back for the children. Imagine what Hazrat Abbas's heart must have felt at that time when this man who is the epitome of honor, epitome of bravery, a man who could take on an army by himself gets told, put away your sword and only go out to get some water in a flask. But Abul Fadl would never say no to his master, even though his heart was breaking from inside. He got on his horse, he got his alam, he got the canteen, the flask of Ibn Sakina, and he rode towards the battlefield. 
he broke through the enemy's lines as if they were non-existent and he finally got to Farad. He stepped, he put his feet in the river Farad, he looked down, he takes the water into his hand and as soon as he takes the water into his hand, remember this is a man who has been thirsty for three days, he looks at the water and he sees the face of Sakina and and uh, he takes He takes the water flask and he sees the face of Sakina on my side. And uh, we got to the point where Abu Fadl Abbas left the tents towards the battlefield. As he heads towards the battlefield, Abu Fadl Abbas takes the alam and he breaks through the lines of the enemies as if they're non existent. He puts his feet into the water and he takes the water into his hand. He doesn't take a drink of the water. When he looks at the water, he sees the face of Bibi Sakina and he throws the water back. He tells his horse to drink from the water and imagine the loyalty of even the horse. Where the horse refuses to drink the water, Abu Fadl takes the water into the flask and he rides. He turns around and rides back towards the tents. It is said at this point that the enemies, because they could not beat him in one-on-one -on -one combat, they all gathered around him and people were hiding in trees. It is at that point someone comes out from behind a tree and cuts the right hand of the Abbas. He takes the water flask onto his left hand. It is said a few moments later someone comes out from the trees and cuts his left hand. Abu Fadl is left without any arms, but he takes the canteen into his mouth and he holds the alam on his chest. It is at this moment they say that Hurmala, when Mukhtar captured him, Hurmala said there were two arrows that are fired at Abu Fadl that broke him. One was the arrow that are fired into his eye, and one was the arrow that are fired into the mushk. It is said that as when the arrow is fired with the mushk and the water starts to spill, Abu Fadl loses all hope, all dreams that he had of taking the water back. What does he do? He turns back towards the tents. Uh, he turns back towards the water and he rides back towards the river again. Abu Fadl can't bear to see the face of Bibi Sakina and tell her that he wasn't able to bring the water. And he said at that moment, someone hits Abu Fadl on the head and he falls from the horse. Imagine a man who is so tall without any arms falling off the horse. How would he fall and even fallen onto his face? But not only would he have fallen into his face, imagine there was an arrow in one of his eyes. How he would have fallen onto the ground? Imagine how the arrow would have embedded itself into the back of Abu Fadl's eyes. Mullah Hussein then hears the call of his brother. He says, Ya Akhi, Assalam. Abu Fadl never called his brother Akhi. He says, Ya Mawla, Assalam. Ya Aqa, Assalam. Mullah Hussein comes running into the battlefield. Abu Fadl has blood in one eye and an arrow in the other eye. All he can hear is the sound of the horse's footsteps. He says, oh man, know that I am the Lion of Haider. Don't come anywhere near me. But the rider comes closer and closer. As Mullah Hussein kneels towards Abu Fadl, Abu Fadl smells the sweet scent of the Imamat coming from the beard of Imam Hussein Imam Hussein says, oh my brother, what have they done to you? Abu Fadl says, Abu Fadl then moves his head. He let, he, <coughs> Imam Hussein puts the head of Abu Fadl on, the lap, in, on his laps. But Abu Fadl moves his head from the laps of Mala Hussein. He does it again. He does it a third time. Mala Hussein says, Oh, Abu Fadl, oh, my brother, why are you moving your head from my laps? He says, Oh, my master, in my final moments, my head will be on your laps. In your final moments, whose head will your laps, whose laps will your head be on? Allah Hussain says, oh, my brother, don't you worry. My mother, Bibi Fatima, is coming and she will be there in my final moments. <clears throat> Mullah Hussain rests the head of old father on his, on his, on his laps. His old old father. As you're leaving this world, do you have any final wish of a father? says, oh, my master. When I was born, my mother told me that I would not open my eyes until I saw your beautiful. As I leave this world and breathe my last breaths, I just want to see your beautiful face, my master. But I've got no arms, and in one eye I've got an arrow, and the other eye is covered with blood. If it's not too much of a problem, please can you wipe the blood from my eye? Mullah Hussein wipes the blood 
from the eye of Abul Fadl. And the Mullah Hussain says, Oh, Abul Fadl, I've got one final wish myself. Abul Fadl says, Oh, my Arthur, any wish for you? He says, Oh, Abul Fadl, just call me brother once before you leave this world. At this moment, Mullah Abbas is in a very difficult situation because he's told his mother since he was born, he has promised his mother that he will never call him brother. But yet, in his final moments, he's got his Mola, his Aqa telling him, call me brother. What does he do? Mola Hussain says, and this is in Urdu for those of you who understand. <clears throat> he, said, he says, Fariyad suru meri mujhe bhai ghazi. He says, oh my brother, listen to my call, listen to my cries and call me brother. Just once in your life. Mala Hussain says, Bajipan metera chula Atho se chula ya tha Atho ko tere le kar Chalna bhi sikha ya tha Ab in hatho se mein किस तरह उठाऊंगा बिन बाज ये लाश तेरी फरियाद सुनो मेरी एक बार मुझे भाई कह कर तो बुला गाजी अकबर का कलेजा है नजरों में मेरे भैया असगर का लहू होगा हाथों में मेरे भैया मैं किस को पुकारूंगा मैं किस को सदा दूंगा Malapa says, Ruh karke najaf ka phe. Malapa stands his head towards najaf. And he says, Ruh karke najaf ka phe. Ghazi ne kaha baba, ab paas nahi baazu, mein kya karu ya zahra, mawla hai akela, ay karbal me bachi hai Shabir ki tanhaai Aqa me suwe khayma Har ghez nahi jaunga Main kaisi sakina ko Mu apna dikhaunga अब रोज कयामत तक दरिया के किनारे से उठवाना नलाश मेरी हो कर बले मित जानी थी शबीर की ये हालात एक बार कहो भाई पूरी हूँ मेरी हसरार आबास के होटो से एक बार सताई शबीर मेरे भाई अल्लाह मुसल्लम अल्लाह محمد و آل محمد و عجل فارے جبین On nights like this, on this night in particular when I think of the Masai of Al-Fatul Abbas my heart wants to be transported to Karbala to that 
shrine where I can meet, when I can see Abu Fadl, inshallah, we all get the chance to go for Arba'in. And I want all the parents, all the children ever at home to recite with me because not only does the Messiah Abu Fadl Abbas make the heart softer and make us weep, make us cry, but it makes our will stronger, makes our determination stronger. And inshallah, we all get the chance to go to Karbala for Arba'in. And I want all of you at home to say, Labbaik Ya Hussein, Labbaik Ya Hussein, Labbaik Ya Hussein, Labbaik Ya Hussein. And we say that inshallah, we will be there by your side. Walking upon the angel's wing, leaving behind everything. Seventy-five kilometers on our way to the King of Kings. The air is filled with so much love. The stars shine on us from above. This is our call to everyone. Raise up your hands and say as one, La Beke Ya Hussein. Everybody together, La Beke Ya Hussein, La Beke Ya Hussein, La Beke Ya Hussein. Kirbala, we are on our way to you, Ya Hussein. We want to see your door soon. And Bishop, for us so far, they might have prayed. That is the reason we were made, created to cry for her sake. On that day, we'd come to his aid. We'll not stop our service to him. We may be heard. Or lose our live, this is our call to everyone. Raise up your hands and say as one, La Beke Ya Hussein. Everybody together at home, La Beke Ya Hussein, La Beke Ya Hussein, La Beke Ya Hussein. Kirbala, we are on our way to you. Ya Hussein, we want to see you do soon. As we lay eyes upon your doors, we start to shake right to the bone. Speechless, we just look on in all. We can't control the tears that flow. Standing in vain on her domain Between Abbas and you who say This is our call to everyone Raise up your hands and say as one La ya Hussein we are on our way to you, Ya Hussein. We want to see you do soon. And let's end with one final noha. I won't take much more of your time. In Farsi, in English, and in Urdu. Ustad in a baridah maidan, barijis mehame alam jan. Bar takht daliri sultan kiye kiye ki abbas az baade mar di sirab kursi kamre alam tab ganji noy ishq noy ab kiye kiye ki abbas masnad dilavri ro sahib saf shikan lashkar e maharib jangavari bi harif jan ki us pure ali ibn abi talib mola 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 abal fas mola 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 abal fas mola 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 abal fas 
Mola, 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 Abba lifts the mirror image of Peter, the meaning of honor and valor. You grant every wish and prayer, kie, 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 Abba say, the warrior like no other, the one that was saying, brother, you'll be in our hearts for Ever kia 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 abbas it. This is testament to what you gave. That the water circles your holy grave. If our hearts are troubled or any pain, we look to your shrine and call the name. We look to your shrine and call the name. Ya abbas, ya abbas. Ya Abbas, 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 I wanted to, inshallah, pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially Bibi Fatima the Zahra, alayhi alayha, accept our tears, accept our azadari. And I just want to say a few words for, for the school and for these programs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the organizers of these programs. The work that you're all doing is phenomenal. And inshallah, may you pass the the torch of azar from your generation onto the next generation through the wasila of these majlises and these programs. Wa Muhammad wa ala Muhammad salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajah majmain Jazakallah, subhanallah Brother Shabbir Tijani May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your effort, your amal In every majlis of Ahlul Bayt In its complete manner Alhamdulillah, mashallah With the comments that the Jewish children around the world uh, Pastes and shares shows us truly that they are learning and the essence the true essence of azadari is in their hearts and will inshallah remain in their hearts forever um until the day of judgment i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and your entire family safe and just the same dua that you have nicely given to all the um, participants around the world, their family, myself, CAS school team, that I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the same for you, dear brother Shabbi Tijani, that you pass on the torch of Azadari, the essence of Azadari to your next generation and it continues forward until the day of judgment, inshallah. Dear children, this be brings us to the end of tonight's majlis. Let's all stand up, face the Qibla, and let's all recite this final salam nama. Let's all, dear children, stand up. Allahumma swalli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum ajmain. Tonight's salam, we are doing the ziyarat nama, the salam nama, some call it, is we're standing our peace and salam to all the 14 Muslims alayhim salam so let's all really do this properly tonight bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alayka ya rasul allah assalamu alayka ya imam ali murtaza assalamu alayki ya bibi fatima zahra assalamu alayki ya bibi zainab al kubra assalamu alayki ya bibi sakina Assalamu alaikum ya shohadai karbala. Please accept our condolences, our pursa. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Hassan. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Hussein. Assalamu alaikum ya Hazrat Abul Fazl al Abbas. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Zain al Abidin. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Muhammad Baqir. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Jafar Sadiq. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Musa al-Kazim. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Ali Raza. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Muhammad Taqi. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Ali al-Naqi. Assalamu alaikum ya Imam Hassan Askari. 
let's all bow down a little bit dear children and send our proper salam to the imam of our time who is waiting for us that we also become such a great muslim such a great human being that we are in the companions and close ambassadors of imam mahdi assalamu alaikum ya mola ya sahib al asr wa zaman ya imam ya imam ya imam ya allah dear children continue to stand up and say ilahi amin on the following May Allah accept all your cries, your effort, your love for Abba Abdullah Hussein and Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas. Ilahi Amin. May Allah give health to the sick ones through the intercession of Bimar Karbala, Imam Zain al Abidin. Ilahi Amin. Special request by a sister and a brother tonight that they are not well. Please recite for their well being for everybody else around the world, especially in Afghanistan right now. What's happening with all those little children, the girls being taken away? Let's all pray to Allah that Ya Allah, no one is merciful than you, O oh Allah. No one is as merciful, as compassionate as you are all oh Allah only you can help these people around the world only you can bring the final justice Allah because your adal your insaf your justice prevails over every single person's justice may Allah give kamil iman complete faith to each and every one of us ilahi amin may we all get the manifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ahlul bayt alayhim salam ilahi amin May we all get the opportunity to visit all the holy shrines of the Masumin. Ilahi Amin. May Allah forgive our sins, our mistakes, our shortcomings. Ilahi Amin. May Allah forgive us if we have been rude, disrespectful in the majlis of Abu Abdullah Hussein. Ilahi Amin. May Allah hasten the reappearance of Imam Mahdi. Alayhi salam. Ilahi Amin. Let's all recite Surah Fatiha and three times Surah Tawheed. For all the marhumin, all the people who have passed away, all the shahadai karbala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. Maliki Yomidin. Yak Nabido wa Yak Nasain. Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladina and Amta Alehim. Gayr al Makhlube Alehim Waladalin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kuhu Wallahu Ahad. Allah is لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد just a final dua of Hazrat Abul Fazl Abbas Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya Kashif Karbi An Wajih Al Hussein Ikshif Karbi Bi Haqqi Akhik Al Hussein Alayhi Salam Ask for your hajjats ask for your wishes now dear children and then recite salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajhum ajma'in Iltimas e dua inshallah I will see you tomorrow night Khuda Hafiz